The closure of the crossings surrounding the Gaza Strip affects many Palestinians, especially patients denied entry for medical treatment in the West Bank or outside Gaza. Zainab Al-Jamal was one of those patients who passed away in 2007 as she was regarded a security threat to Israel. Hala al Safadi has this report. Since 2007, when Palestinians democratically elected Hamas to lead the government, Gaza has turned into a sealed jail as a punishment for the right of self-determination. Israel has laid and maintained a siege against the territory from which Gazans suffer a great deal due to the shortage of fuel, food and electricity on one hand and a closure imposed on all the crossings surrounding the Gaza Strip on the other. Gaza is surrounded by three crossings, Ares and Karma Salim crossings, which are controlled by Israel, and the Rafah crossing, which is an Egyptian-controlled crossing. Both the Arish and Ares crossings allow passengers to get and out of the Strip. Owing to the closure of crossings, even for the humanitarian cases, hundreds of Palestinians have died, while the international community and the world stand silent. This is uh, under the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Every Palestinian, children, woman, man, has a right to, to treatment and, and, and medication. Article 55, 56 uh, compels Israel as an occupying power. No matter how illegal the occupation is, as an occupying power, you have the obligation to grant every Palestinian or the people that you're occupying uh, access to treatment and medical supplies. So many are, are denied this treatment, even after the long process. According to the Gaza Health Ministry, over 600 Gazans died waiting for treatment. Treatment that would have been available to any human being under any circumstances. Gazan patients face two main problems. The shortage of medical equipment and treatments in the hospitals in Gaza and the closure of the crossings which does not allow many of them to go outside Gaza when needed for medical treatment. Zainab al-Jamal was one of the victims that breathed her last in 2007 as she was denied medical entry to Jerusalem to receive an endoscope to treat her bile duct obstruction, an operation that is regarded as simple in other countries but not for Zainab in the blockaded Gaza, for the required operation equipment was not available in Gaza hospitals. Zainab applied to get a permit to travel to Jerusalem to undergo the operation there, but she was denied entry under the pretext of her being a security threat to Israel. Reporters' file visited the Al-Jamal family who wanted to share their misery of losing their 26-year-old daughter when they least expected it. We talked to Zainab's mother, whose gloomy eyes were full of tears when telling us what her daughter had to go through before her death. Zainab was diagnosed with bile duct obstruction. The doctors wanted to transfer her to Israel for treatment because the hospitals suffer from equipment shortage. However, the Israelis rejected the treatment request. Zainab was regarded as security threat to Israel and was not given a permit to Jerusalem. Then, doctors in Gaza tried to transfer her to Egypt for treatment, but the borders were closed. Nine days later, she left to Egypt. Every day that went by after she was diagnosed was a day of her life. After a long wait at the Egyptian crossing, Zainab spent 13 days at the hospital in Egypt, where she received dialysis after her biliary succulents was poisoned. On the last day before her death, Zainab received endoscope, which made her feel better. However, the Al-Jamal family's happiness did not last for very long. After 30 minutes, Zainab started shouting of pain and calling for her aunt and dad, who were with her all along. At dawn, I went to see her. The security did not allow me, but I insisted. I ran to her room and saw an empty bed. Now, for a fact, Zainab passed away. In the morning, we started working on getting permits back home. The ambulance came to pick us up. We tried to get back, but for two times they were sending us back to Egypt with Zainab's body. We passed to Gaza via the Israeli-controlled Karm Abu Salem. In the crossing, an Israeli soldier asked me, How old is she? I replied, She's 26 years old, and she died because you didn't give her a permit to receive an endoscope in Jerusalem. Both my brother and I were crying all the way to Gaza. Zainab was not the only child the Al-Jamal family had lost. They as well lost their 18-year-old son who was killed during an Israeli invasion to their neighborhood. 
The pain of losing two sincere members of the family can be felt while the parents were looking at their children's pictures all over the house. Losing my daughter and son because of Israel gave me a feeling that cannot be put into words. It's a better feeling. Israel killed two of my kids because of the siege and the invasions and the closure of the borders, especially for the patients. The patients die of waiting on the borders. Zainab was dying in my arms and I could not do anything. May Allah bless her soul. Uh, my 26-year-old sister was regarded as a security threat by the Zionist entity. She was denied the right to medical care, which is uh, a basic human uh, right, um, as my father and aunt and uh, dead, uh, my dead sister made it into Gaza. An Israeli uh, soldier attempted to stupidly be wise. Uh, he asked my aunt and dad, why do you cry? All of us will die. Yeah, all of us will die, but we will not die as Zionists want us to die. We'll survive and inshallah we will live for a better future for us and our children. Gazans believe Israel seems to only use excuses as a means of standing in the face of Palestinian patients whose life might be at stake if they had to wait for the permits if a permit was given to them in the first place. The suffering in Gaza is not only limited to Zainab's story, as many Gazan patients lost their lives because Israel claimed they were security threats. Hala Safadi, Press TV, Gaza.